for joining today. We'll get started in just one second. Let me first go over some uh, ground rules and set the stage for this webinar. So this is one of the uh, series of webinars we're having this week uh, related to the phase four guidelines that were just announced and um, will be coming into effect this Friday, June 26. Today is all about hotels and accommodations. Um, a little bit about the structure of this webinar. First of all, I know folks have lots of questions. I hope that uh, the content of the webinar itself will answer most of your questions. But if you do have questions, please submit them via the chat function on your webinar. You'll notice there's both a chat and a Q&A, much easier to manage the questions through the chat. So again, please submit them through the chat function. I will do my best to answer the questions. I'll pause periodically um, through the guidelines to, to answer those questions. However, I may not get to every question. We have over 100 attendees on this webinar. And there may be some questions, frankly, that, that uh, I will need to check with some other folks here at the city in order to get um, answers. So that is why at the bottom of every page, you will see an email address that is BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org. So if uh, your question isn't answered or perhaps your question uh, is very specific and I'm unable to answer it or perhaps for whatever reason your question isn't answered over the course of this webinar, please do follow up to BACP Outreach at cityofchicago.org and me or someone from my team will follow up shortly with an answer to your question. We know uh, obviously there's, there's lots of questions that people have right now. So we wanna make sure that we're giving you an opportunity to answer that if it is not answered as part of this webinar. Again, please use the chat function if you do have any questions. I am recording this webinar and it will be available uh, to view at our uh, business workshops website and typing that into the chat for everybody. This is the same site that you used in order to sign up and register for this webinar. Recordings of old webinars, it should be up by tomorrow. Um, and so if there's anybody, if you had a question, something you missed, uh, something you wanted to remind yourself about, or if uh, maybe one of your coworkers wasn't able to attend, they can always view the webinar at chicago.gov slash business workshops. Um, also, I wanna make sure everybody is aware if they haven't gone to yet, I'll put it into the chat as well, to visit chicago.gov slash reopening. Most of what I'm gonna do today is just uh, providing an overview, a detailed overview of the guidelines that you can find on that website, chicago.gov slash reopening. So uh, most of your answers you will be able to find in those guidelines themselves. So if you have not visited that website, highly recommend that you do so. So uh, we'll get started a little bit on the agenda for today. So again, today is all about phase four. As a reminder, the city is ready to transition to phase four along with the rest of the state this Friday, June 26th. So the content that I'm covering in today's webinar comes into effect this Friday, June 26th. Now, you'll obviously hotels um, were able to reopen and were able to be open during phase three and, and in fact, throughout the entire um, stay at home order period. But you'll notice that there are some new guidelines in place for phase four, and that's what today is all about. So I'll provide an overview why we're at phase four, what it means for the whole city. I think it's important for folks to know what it means for your personal life, what it means for other types of businesses and why we're ready for phase four. And importantly, why phase four in Chicago looks a little bit different than the rest of the state and how that could potentially change, what sort of metrics we're using and how, um, and, and really the, the important differences in the criteria. I'm gonna go into detail about the reopening guidance specifically for hotels. I'm gonna cover some reopening resources and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about enforcement and the operational requirements that, that you at, at your hotel um, are expected to follow. So first, to kind of frame this conversation, I want to talk about the entire Protecting Chicago reopening framework. So back in, I think, mid-May, not earlier, the city released an entire reopening framework for how the city is going to move towards um, uh, full reopening. So as you know, and as I've said, 
we will be moving into phase four on Friday, June 26th. So this phase we're calling the gradually resume phase. So the, the idea here is that our health metrics tell us and what we're using to evaluate the, um, the, the incidence of COVID-19 in the city of Chicago tells us that we're ready to gradually resume more typical operating under, uh, under kind of a new normal, under um, pretty uh, important safety restrictions and guidelines, but that um, we're really further reopening here. So under this phase, you'll find that um, additional businesses are reopening with capacity restrictions, um, but some of those restrictions are lifted and appropriate safeguards in place. So you'll find, and I'll go into a little more detail on it, really most businesses um, will be reopening or expanding operations under phase four. Now, there's gonna be some uh, important guidelines and safeguards in place, but you'll find that most businesses are able to reopen at least in some capacity under phase four. Additional public amenities will reopen while continuing to wear a face covering, <clears throat> excuse me, and physically distancing. So as a, as, as, as a whole, you'll see indoor capacity really across the board at nearly every industry is limited to 25% with a maximum of 50 people. Face coverings should be worn at all times when social distancing is impossible and six feet of social distancing should be in place. So that's kind of the overarching, which you'll see across the board, not just for hotels. And importantly, if you don't get anything else out of this webinar, I want to make it very, very clear that we are not out of the woods yet. We have made significant progress over the last few weeks and months. Uh, our case rate, our total cases, uh, everything, a hospi hospi a hospitalization rate, all of the numbers are looking very good compared to what they were. However, we're still having hundreds of new cases just within the city of Chicago every day. We're still having people die from COVID-19 every single day. So if you take nothing else out of this webinar, you should be um, understanding that we are still in the midst of a health crisis. And we, um, you, you, the business owner, you, the employee, etc. need to, to keep that in mind. This is not a full reopening and, and we're not going to be ready for a full reopening truly anytime soon. We need to do this as a dimmer switch, not flipping a light switch. So continue to distance, allow vulnerable residents uh, to shelter if needed. If you have symptoms, if you have a cough, a fever, anything like that, get tested and stay home. Again, for us to be able to move to the next phase, to increase capacity, we need to see cases continue to go down. And the mayor and the health commissioner have been clear, if we don't see that, if in fact we see the spike that really uh, alarmingly a lot of the other states around uh, the country have seen, then we will not hesitate to go back to phase three or even to phase two. God forbid, we don't want it to happen. But I think the last report I saw was 29 states around the country are seeing cases go up instead of going down. They're going down in Illinois, they're going down in Chicago, but we need to continue that progress. We don't wanna lose all the significant progress we've made over the last few weeks and months. So a little bit more about phase four. Again, really most businesses are either reopening or expanding under phase four under those 25% capacity with a max of 50. You'll see that as across the board, really all industries, um, as long as they can meet those guidelines can uh, really reopen. So that means childcare, I mean, city services, parks, libraries, the lakefront um, just reopened yesterday, office and real estate jobs, again, under those same guidelines, hotels and lodgings, which we'll talk about today, outdoor attractions, retail stores, Personal services, uh, they've been open under phase three. Now they can uh, have can expand operations a little bit so that masks can be taken off for certain personal services that require them to be taken off for facials, beard shaves, things like that. Health and fitness clubs, again, they were open under phase three. They can now expand operations before health and fitness only was allowed to have one-on-one -on -one training. They can now open up full indoor spaces at 25% capacity. Restaurants and bars, again, were able to reopen for outdoor dining under phase three, can now do indoor dining uh, with a 25% capacity limit under phase four. 
Places of worship opened up uh, halfway through phase three. Museums and zoos are now reopening under phase four. Performance venues and movie theaters are now reopening under phase four. Again, under those same 25% capacity with a max of 50 people with a, in uh, an indoor room or space. So that's just kind of a general overview of what you'll see uh, reopening um, outside of just hotels. So what will you find at that chicago.gov slash reopening site? First, if you haven't done it, please visit chicago.gov slash reopening and read your industry guidelines in detail. That's really what I'm gonna be reviewing today and providing some clarity on some of those points. Uh, you'll also be able to find a self-certification that, that you can take to show that your business knows the phase four guidelines and is uh, um, certifying and pledging to follow those guidelines. You'll also find a series of additional resources, FAQs, a matrix about what is open and what isn't open, um, national, state resources, also health-focused posters that were made by the Chicago Department of Public Health that you can download and that we, as part of your guidelines, need to have folks post uh, those posters or something like those posters all around your facility. If you have any questions, they can always be submitted to 311. Again, you have my email, our email here as well. Any additional questions can be submitted to BACP outreach at cityshicago.org and we'll work to get you those answers as quickly as possible. So again, strongly recommend visiting chicago.gov slash reopening if you haven't done so already. Even if you have done so already, please do check it out. So again, you'll find, uh, I think there's 20 different industry guidelines about now posted. All of them are kind of split up into the same general overview. So first you have how do you maintain healthy interactions through social distancing. Your magic number is still six feet for social distancing, even as we are reopening. Gathering size. Gathering size was 10, is 10 currently under phase three. That number will be expanded to 50, um, limited to 25% capacity, but the, the max for an indoor gathering is 50. Um, protective gear, uh, face coverings, uh, you know, required uh, at indoor spaces. And we'll talk a little bit about what exactly that means for hotels. And then hygiene requirements. Uh, safe spaces and conditions. What can you do to make sure your space is safe and has and have conditions in place that keep customers and employees safe? Um, including entry access, cleaning standards, visual guidance, and then your workplace conditions. Finally, operational resilience and monitoring. How can you maintain the safety of your establishment into the future? Um, things like contact tracing, stuff like that. You also find some additional resources as a part of those guidelines, including a glossary, self-screening questionnaire, and then other public health resources. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna jump into what, uh, what you'll see as part of the phase four guidelines for hotels. First, at the top of all of the guidelines, you'll see a little illustration that, that provides a nice visual and a nice overview for what you'll see at, at hotels. And then I'm gonna go into all these guidelines in detail. This is just a quick overview. Six foot indicators, again, six feet is your magic number for social distancing. You should have indicators placed throughout common areas and require face coverings in all common areas. Uh, you should do daily housekeeping only upon request and when guests obviously are not within their room in order to limit staff time and guest rooms. Restaurants and bars can open at reduced capacity for in-house dining and drinking. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means. But if you have a restaurant, if you have a bar, they should be following the food service and bars guidelines. So, and if you have a fitness center, it should be following the fitness center guidelines, et cetera. So under those, restaurants can reopen at 25% uh, capacity with a max of uh, 50 people within one room or space. You should post visual signage throughout your facility regarding hand washing, social distancing, uh, face coverings, and other things. Again, you can find those postings at chicago.gov slash reopening. Guests are encouraged to use mobile check-in and check-out and mobile keys. High-touch areas, particularly elevators, should be frequently cleaned by employees. And you should be limiting gatherings in areas such as lobbies. Again, any sort of indoor space should have no more than 50 people and 25% uh, 
um, and and 25% uh, capacity. Great. So again, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. So social distancing. Again, ensure six feet between individuals and close choke points, particularly in lines, lounges, elevators, if, if, if that is uh, practical. Um, ensure that guests are socially distancing in all of these areas. Um, if you have any sort of event space, it should be set up to allow for social distancing between guests. Limit gatherings to 50 individuals and indoor capacity at 25%. So you'll see the key changes from phase three are highlighted in red. Gatherings of employees and guests should be limited to no more than 50 individuals for indoor spaces and 100 for outdoor spaces. Again, while practicing social distancing. So uh, one question I have coming in, does this 50 individuals include staff? That really depends on the specifics of that gathering. If, for example, you have folks that are all gathered and stationary um, within one location, um, and, and the, the, the staff is fully within that space and within that space for the entirety of the time, then you should count staff towards that 50 individuals. But if, for example, at a restaurant, the staff have like their own private bathrooms, their own separate area where they're spending most of the time, then you do not need to count staff as part of those 50 individuals. For example, if you're having some sort of event space where staff are coming in and out, they have their own separate areas, then you should be, uh, you should, you do not need to count staff. You should only be counting customers, attendees as part of those 50 individuals. Again, you should be limiting capacity to 25% for all indoor spaces. So basically it's 25% for 50 individuals, whichever is fewer. We're excluding individual hotel rooms and also your overall hotel guest room capacity does not have, is not limited to 25%. So you can have 100% of your rooms full as long as all indoor spaces, you're always limiting that to 25% capacity. So, you, you know, your individual hotel rooms, um, your individual hotel rooms are not, um, are not limited to 25% capacity. Um, and a little note about this, and I think a couple of questions are coming in uh, related to this. This is 25% capacity or 50 individuals um, per room or floor. So if you have some sort of event where people are entirely in different rooms or in different floors, uh, then you should be limiting each one of those to 25% capacity or 50 individuals. But that's provided that there really are truly different, fully different spaces um, and that they're not just all ever in one space that has over 50 individuals. Um, you should be ensuring that protective gear is worn by all employees and customers. This means face coverings worn over nose and mouth. Exceptions can be made for people with medical conditions or disabilities. Um, obviously, they can be taken off while uh, customers are in their own rooms. Um, but you should be ensuring that housekeepers especially are wearing face coverings, gloves, and appropriate eye covers. This is something in place that has been in place since phase three. Okay. Um, you should be promoting hygienic interactions, providing hand sanitizer and or wipes for guests and colleagues at all key locations throughout the hotel, lobby, elevator areas, event spaces. You should be providing amenities, hand sanitizer, soap, wipes to the guest rooms upon request. Now I'm going to go into a couple more guide, a uh, couple more uh, guideline sections. I'm going to open it up for a couple of questions right now. I've seen a couple come through. Um, I'm going to get into a little bit more detail about events, so I'll hold those questions for now. Um, I had a question, do we have a meeting room set up specific guidelines that will come out? For example, for a theater set up meeting room, do they need to be six feet apart at all sites? So we do have specific guidelines for um, performance venues. So if you're using um, something that is, is kind of like a performance venue with a theater set up, they do need to put, they do need to have six feet apart at all 
sides and all guests should be six feet apart. Again, that six feet requirement is pretty much always the case across all different industries uh, for any sort of public space. Uh, I see a couple questions come in that I, I apologize I'm not going to answer now because I'm going to get into them in just a couple slides. Um, entry access. You should be implementing screening measures for both employees and guests. What does this mean? This means at minimum, employees should be self-screening to make sure that they do not have symptoms and they should not be reporting or remaining at work if they feel ill or if they have a fever, anything like that. So that is what you should be doing at minimum, excuse me, is making sure that employees themselves are self-screening. However, we do encourage um, that we do encourage that um, you can do more than that. You can do temperature checks. You know, we at, I work at City Hall. We have a temperature check every day on our way in. That's something we are encouraging, but at minimum, employees should be self-screening. You should be posting a pledge upon entrance. Again, at minimum, posting some sort of pledge upon your entrance that basically says that customers or external suppliers, anybody coming into your space, is uh, not currently exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms. Again, you can do more than that. You can do screenings. You can ask questions of people as they come in. But at minimum, you should be having your employees self-screen and you should be posting a pledge upon entrance. You should be increasing your cleaning frequency in public areas, focusing specifically on high contact surfaces. And also your daily house stripping service should be um, provided on request only obviously when guests are not in the room in order to minimize the time that housekeepers are in the rooms. You should be providing visual guidance again on hygiene standards and entry requirements, markers on the grounds, posters around common areas. Again, you can find all of this information at chicago.gov slash reopening, including posters that you can post around your space should be rearranging tables or furnitures to be six feet apart in common areas to allow for social distancing. You should consider, uh, and you'll be able to find this link on the CDC, on the um, uh, reopening website, CDC guidelines to increase airflow of indoor spaces. You know, the, the science tells us that um, it is much more likely for this disease to be transmitted in indoor spaces. So, uh, there's there's ways to increase airflow, windows open, ventilators, things like that. Uh, ventilation to to increase the airflow um, between indoor spaces. Now this is the last page we're talking about guidelines, so I'm going to cover this real quick, and then I'm going to open it up to some questions. And then I'm going to go into a little more detail about food service and about um, about health and fitness centers. You should be minimizing in-person interactions as much as possible. Obviously, your housekeepers, your your uh, desk workers, they do need to be at work, but it's mu as much as possible, you should be minimizing in-person interactions. This means online trainings instead of in-person trainings, virtual staff meetings instead of in-person staff meetings. You should be limiting interactions between individuals, um, you know, promote F if practical, electronic, keyless, cashless, paperless checking as much as possible. Uh, the less, you know, interactions we have with other people, the less likely we are to the less likely we are to transmit this disease. And uh, this is kind of getting into a couple of those important things that people are asking about. You should follow relevant industry guidelines for your operations within the hotel. For example, you should be following the food service guidelines for restaurants and room service, and you should be following the health and fitness guidelines for gyms. I'm going to talk about those in a little bit more detail in just one second. You should be also be promoting appropriate social distancing by staggering arrival times, breaks, and uh, movements as, as necessary. Great. Again, I'm seeing a couple questions come in on food service. The next slide, I'm going to talk even more detail about food at events, things like that. You should be limiting travel for business. Um, what this means for, for hotels could be if you have multiple hotel locations, you should be limiting staff travel so they're just at single hotel locations and then importantly you should be following our health department and cdc guidelines for testing and tracing protocols that means that if an employee does contract COVID 19 and you should be prepared for that reality 
This disease is still very much present in Chicago. It shouldn't be a surprise if somebody, if an employee does test positive. Um, if they've had co close contact with another coworker or another person who's diagnosed with COVID-19, they should self-quarantine. And importantly, if you become aware of two or more cases possibly associated with an establishment over a 14-day period, you are required to report those to the health department. And that makes sure that we're doing proper contact tracing. Um, I'm going to get back to this slide in just one second, but I wanted to talk, I'm seeing a lot of questions come in related to this, about the requirements for food service. So these are, uh, if I recommend, in addition to reading the hotel guidelines, that you look closely at the food service and bars guidelines, because these are the guidelines that should be followed for event spaces that serve food or alcohol. So importantly, again, 25% capacity, no more than 50 people per room. Critically, all food and drink must be consumed and must be served to customers that and, and must yeah, served and consumed by customers that are sitting. There is if, if any food or any drink is occurring, then they must be seated. So that means cocktail hours. You can't have folks mingling within a space as a part of a cocktail hour anytime food or drink is being served and consumed, the guests, the patrons must be seated. Um, you know, so some sort of past appetizers is okay. Again, as long as the customers are seated and as long as the tables are, um, as long as the tables are six feet apart. Um, so regarding other activities at events, such as dancing, all activities that you have should maintain social distancing. So dancing, for example, um, very hard to maintain social distancing while dancing. So it's not something that, that should be happening at this point. Um, other sort of activities that do allow for social distancing can happen, but you should be maintaining six feet apart um, between people. Um, while, uh, so, and then this, these guidelines really are in place for events or for foods for any sort of restaurant you have. Again, tables should be six feet apart. Um, indoor dining is limited to 25% capacity or 50 people per room or floor. Outdoor dining, outdoor space does not have that same restrictions as long as tables are six feet apart. Your maximum for any outdoor gathering should be 100. Again, while social distancing is in place, face coverings can be removed only while customers are seated and eating or drinking. They should have them on any other time other than when they are seated and eating and or drinking. Um, again, I see a couple questions come through. Let me get quickly into uh, health and fitness. So obviously many hotels have health and fitness centers. Um, they can reopen for indoor activity, indoor use, restricted to a maximum, again, of 25% capacity and 50 within a space. Pools can open at those same capacity restrictions. Pools can open under 25% capacity limits for indoor pools um, or 50% capacity for outdoor pools. Again, pools can reopen, private pools at hotels can reopen for indoor use at 25%, outdoor at 50%. Locker rooms and showers can reopen with proper cleaning procedures. Face coverings for health and fitness should be worn at all times while indoors for any, any sort of exercise, even if they're the only person in the gym, they should be wearing face coverings. If you are outdoors, they can be removed provided that proper social distancing is being met. Fitness classes, if you do guys have any classes, they're limited to that again, 25% capacity with a maximum of 50 individuals. If you are uh, unable to ensure that you have no more than 25% capacity in your gym, then really it's incumbent upon you, the manager, to make sure that you have no more than 25% capacity within your uh, fitness center. If that's something you can't maintain, then the fitness center should be closed. Great. Um, again, I see a bunch of questions coming through. There's one last thing I wanna cover and then I'm gonna hop into these questions. We're getting a lot of questions. What 25% capacity, 50 people is, is uh, a challenge. And we truly do understand 
that 25% capacity is a, is a challenge for many businesses. And this is the case for hotels, for restaurants, for um, retail. Um, that 25% capacity is just about across the board. Why are we at 25% capacity? I want to make it clear. All of the decisions that are being made in the city of Chicago are based on the data. Right now, we're very happy to say we're ready for phase four because our case rate has gone down to less than 200 a day. We were not ready for phase four or um, uh, if we didn't get under 200, we would not be ready for phase four. So we're very happy to say we're under 200. I think the last seven day rolling average was 167. So we're under 200. But that's still, as you can see by this uh, table, the moderate to high incident rate. We're still, as long as we're above 100, we still will be looking at 25% capacity with a maximum of 50 people. Now, we're going to be looking at the data. The reason all these decisions are based on the data. And if we get below 100 cases per day, that is when we'll consider and we'll hopefully be able to move to 50% capacity with a gathering size limit of 100 people. And then if we get below 50, we can go up to 75% capacity, 250 people. And then the ultimate goal is to be at that low incidence level and to get below 20 cases a day. So I put this slide up because I want to make it very, very clear why we are keeping that at, at 50 people and why we're limiting it to 25% and making it clear that this is all based on what the data says. So I'm gonna take a minute, I've seen a lot of questions come through and I wanna make sure I am answering those questions. So I see a question here. Is there a maximum time that an event can last? No, there's not a maximum time for an event. Uh, a couple points, and again, I do recommend that you folks check out the food service guidelines in more detail. Alcohol um, should only be sold until 11 p.m. Um, so events can last longer, but alcohol should only be sold until 11 p.m., whether at a restaurant, bar, event, things like that. Great. What are the guidelines for a banquet lunch for 50 attendees? It would not be practical for each person to be at one table six feet apart. Um, would we be able to abide by the restaurant guidelines of no more than 10 per table, table six feet apart? Yes. Any sort of event, you, got, you folks should be following the food service guidelines for any food that is being served, any sort of events. So you can have a banquet lunch for 50 attendees, provided that the tables are six feet apart and you have no more than 10 people per table. Are guests allowed to approach the bar to get a cocktail or are servers required to deliver? That's a great question. Guests can approach the bar to get a cocktail. Um, it's not a requirement that servers must deliver. However, when guests approach that bar, they should put their face covering on. Anytime that they're not seat seated and eating, they are required to wear a face cover. Are buffets allowed with attendants and guests receiving um, from the attendant and then seating themselves? Yes, another great question. Buffets are allowed. However, as exactly you asked, um, they cannot be self-serve buffets. They do need to be served by an employee. And again, face coverings must be worn by um, both the employee and the, um, and the customer in that case. So do I know if what I'm reviewing is the same as the state guidelines? So I understand that there are some differences. I will admit I'm not an expert on the state guidelines. I know that there are some differences. We have different indoor capacity numbers and different gathering size limits. So if you have a hotel that is uh, not located within the city of Chicago, I would recommend uh, visiting the, I believe the website and I'll type it in. So this is for, I believe it's illinois.gov slash DCEO, the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. They have the overview of the state guidelines. So for any um, establishment that is not located within the city of Chicago, you should be checking out those state guidelines. So we are stricter than the state in some ways, and, and that's because we have a higher rate of cases in, and are much denser than the rest of the state. So we, you know, we uh, um, certainly are stricter than the state in some ways. So what happens if we start spiking like in other states? That is a wonderful question. And that is why these guidelines are so important. And that's why it's so important for you folks to make sure that you are following them. 
we we don't want to start spiking in other cases and like it like what is happening in other states but as you can see on this table here if we get back consistently over 200 cases a day we will potentially have to move back to 10 people as our gathering size limit that's again not something we want to do but the the health of our community comes first we need to make sure that we are uh staying safe and we will not hesitate to move back to phase three or god forbid excuse me even phase two so um which was again our full our full stay at home order so we will not hesitate to move back that's why it is critical that we uh, enter phase four with these safety precautions in place. Great. Uh, I got another question. Um, we have a banquet hall that normally serves food and beverage. They are able to have patio seating. Yes, you're able to have patio seating like restaurants. You also, again, starting in phase four on Friday, you can have indoor seating at your restaurant limited to no more than 50 people or 25 percent capacity um okay. uh so question you know i continue to get a couple questions about dancing um will it, that be in any of the next steps uh we I, i'm not 100 percent sure what is in those next steps but we'll make sure to communicate those as soon as they are ready again our goal is to get back down below 100 the goal is to eventually get down below 20. That's when our health commissioner has said we can really start having things back to normal. Um, I see a couple questions came in earlier about pools. As a reminder, pools can be open under 25% capacity for indoor pools and 50% capacity for outdoor pools. Um, and again, I want to emphasize, you know, obviously lots of pools and fitness centers at hotels do not have as much monitoring as they might have, <clears throat> excuse me, as at a typical health and fitness center. So if, if you are unable to ensure that 25% capacity, then you really should be closed. This is the same thing we're telling, you know, residential buildings that have fitness centers or pools. It's critical that you are maintaining that 25% capacity. Um, so great question. Does this mean 25% capacity in the pool or in the pool area? Well, in fact, it means 25% capacity in both. So you should have 25% capacity um, both in the pool and in the pool area. So the, the, the pool area is really any sort of indoor space should be at 25% capacity. So a good question about uh, the 25% occupancy and 50 people. So when I say 25% occupancy or uh, 50 people, what I mean is you should be at 25% capacity or 50 people, whichever is fewer. So if you have a space that 25% occupancy is just 25 people, then you should be limiting it to 25 people. But the maximum you can ever get up to is 50 people. So it's either 25% capacity or 50 people, whichever is fewer. Um, are there any specific instructions on fitness centers and pools on the website? Yes. Again, chicago.gov slash reopening. Um, you can find a detailed overview of fitness centers. I'm also going to be doing a webinar, um, I believe, at 11 today on uh, health and fitness centers in more detail. Um, but and again, all those guidelines, the specific guidelines on health and fitness centers can be found on the website chicago.gov slash reopening. Um, and just, again, the, the important thing for fitness centers, you can reopen for indoors, um, but they are, um, they must be limited to 25% capacity. Face coverings should be worn by everybody that is, um, that is exercising indoors. They can be removed um, for outdoor exercise, provided that six feet of distancing is in place. You know, um, pool, I should say, uh, face coverings can be removed when uh, folks are in the pool but should be worn any other time. Last thing I just want to put up on the, uh, on the screen before we uh, end this webinar um, is the, if you go to chicago.gov slash reopening, you can find a phase four certi self-certification pledge. This is something that we are encouraging all um, businesses to, uh, to uh, complete. 
Basically, it's a series of questions to show that you understand the phase three and phase four guidelines um, and that you are showing your customers, showing your employees that you know those guidelines and that you're ready to reopen. Um, the, and I also, again, want to remind people to uh, visit chicago.gov slash business workshops. That's where you find all of our information about our webinars. I'm holding six different webinars today and tomorrow on all the different industry guidelines. Because again, um, this is the case for all different industries. Some folks might follow multiple guidelines. Hotels obviously are a great example. Um, and they hotels are a great example that you guys maybe are following the food service one, the food service guidelines sometimes, the hotel guidelines sometimes, and the health and fitness center guidelines sometimes. So please visit again. I just added it to the chat. Chicago.gov slash business workshops to register for other webinars. Um, the, and again, I want to make it clear, any question, I think I went through most of the questions, but if I did not answer something or if you think of something later, or if there's something that's really specific that you want answered via email, please do email me at bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org and we'll work to get your answer as soon as possible. Lastly, I just want to emphasize, you know, this is, um, Phase four, again, starts this Friday. All the guidelines I talked about today are not in place today. They're in place this Friday. So don't start, you know, don't say, hey, the city told me I could start opening my fitness center now. Again, that should be on Friday. And I just want to remind and reiterate it again. It's very, very critical that everybody follows these guidelines. We, we're seeing spikes in so many other places. And we don't want, you know, we've had great numbers over the last couple of weeks and we want to make sure that's continuing and, and we're really truly all in this together as we do this so i want to thank you all um i know that there's still some some restrictions but uh hopefully you know if things continue to trend in the right direction we can begin lifting more and more restrictions so um thanks to all of you and as a reminder if you have something that is um that is outside of the city of chicago please visit illinois.gov dceo for the statewide guidelines. Again, BECP Outreach for any questions, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining.